Let's give the Lord, your provider, a big hand. He provides your salvation, your freedom, your hope, a new beginning if you need one tonight. We're in a room. We're in a room with human beings, and we're in a room with the presence of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, when you're in a room like this, it's what it means that anything is possible. There are people in the Bible that would just say, if I, there was a lady that said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And she was sick for 12 years. One touch of Jesus Christ can change what you couldn't change in years and decades. We're obviously not here to give a religion. We're hoping that you have an encounter with Jesus Christ tonight. But, it, but what's a key to getting an encounter with Jesus is having expectation. The enemy wants to steal your faith or your expectation. You know what faith is? Is believing that what you're hoping for is actually going to happen. And that's why there's such an attack on our faith, our belief, our hope. It's almost like there is an imaginary, invisible thing or thought that comes in and just cancels your faith. It gets you depressed and gets you anxious and gets you worried and gets you full of doubt. Now, I want you to get this. If you're full of doubt and you're full of worry and anxiety and depression, this is what it's doing. is counteracting your faith. And you cannot receive anything from God without some type of belief. Either you resist your doubt or you resist, come on, you're going to resist your doubt and receive faith or you're going to resist faith and receive your doubt. It's so easy to receive our doubt. And I'll tell you why. Because it's a pattern of thinking. Someone say patterns of thinking. If we could change our patterns of thinking, this is what the Bible says. If you renew your mind, if you can renew your mind and you can renew your mind, then you'll experience transformation. We're transformed by the renewing of our... We are here not to think the same way. We are here to adjust our thinking so we can adjust our lifestyle. I'm going to get that. I'm so glad everybody's, you're here this, this Wednesday night. I know, I, I know in, uh, in Compton and L.A. And, and maybe Arizona, I think they might be checking in today. Uh, Kenya checks in. And we're so glad that they're in here. Everyone that's online, so glad you're checking in. Because I believe this word tonight can change your life forever. We're going to be talking about the first principle in this book, and we're going to talk about believing and receiving. Say with me, believing and you want to get this book, and I know, I know Mike said it, but you really want to get this book because it's what it does, it, it changes the way you think. And if you could change the way, you'll never have an abundant life until you have abundant thinking. So what this book does is a day-by-day -day devotional is what it is, and it's kind of like sitting down with me, we go through a scripture, you read the scripture, you look at the scripture, you find out what the Lord's telling you about that scripture. Everything we're talking about is biblical. There's no opinion here. It's the Bible. And if you get on a better diet, how many understand? YouTube is not a good diet. Some of the conversations you have are really bad diets. And the enemy works on all those conversations because if you could change your input, you could change your output. Change your thinking. This book's going to help you. Now, understand this. You could hope. You could dream. I want a better life. I want a better life. I, I just need a break. And that none of that's going to get you a better life. You get a better life when your thinking changes. You understand that? So you're going to have to put effort into renewing your mind. Say, someone say effort. No matter where you're at, you got to start where you're at. And the word of God is powerful to change your life. This book, as you're studying and reading, is going to build your faith to receive what God has for you. How many know this, that God, God, thoughts are higher than yours? God's thoughts are You know what there's a scripture that says that I'll give you above and beyond what you could ask or what? He goes, but you have to think something. And if you can raise your thinking, you can raise your receiving. I'm going to get that. You raise your thinking, you raise your what? Do you know why some people in this room, uh, I'm, not, you're not, I'm not talking about being married. I'm talking about some singles. You are settling for somebody that you know is not for you, but you believe you're sticking with them because you don't believe God has something better for you. 
So you're allowing yourself to be abused. You're allowing yourself to be used. And you're saying, man, it's gonna, when is it going to change? Hopefully he changes. God says, no, hopefully you change. Because you're getting exactly what you're believing for. How many want a better life? Come on. You got, stop waiting for somebody to hand it to you. Go after it. God's giving you principles. Work the principles and change your life. Amen? So but after service, get one. And this is, like he said, this is limited edition. This is the first edition of this thing. We're going to re-edit it a few times, you know, and stuff like that. But I just want to get hot off the press. I wrote half of this book, a majority of this book. There we go. Boom. 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 All right. There it goes. The book's just speaking. Like, get me. Right now, I'm hot. I'm hot. I'm ready to go. Right. But, but um, I wrote this half of it, on, or like three quarters of it I wrote on vacation at my quiet time. And I'm telling you, it's just like spending time with me. I'm going to give you some insights on scripture. We went through a 30-day challenge. This is the abundant thinking challenge. This is what's going to happen. By the time you're done, you're going to think differently. You're going to start getting different results. Wins, come on, losses are going to turn into wins. Depression is going to turn into joy. Come on, poverty is going to turn into wealth. Sickness is going to turn into health. Come on, how many believe that could happen if you can start believing for something different? Amen, come on. That's right, that's right. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we have together to study your word. And you want us to increase in every area of our lives. You want our church to increase. You want us to add campuses. You want this church to grow. You want our volunteer and ministry to grow. You want our, our discipleship groups and leaders to grow. You want our businesses to grow. You want our careers to, to Father, for there to be promotions. You want us to grow healthier mentally, physically, relationally. It's true. You want us to experience your love, your peace, your joy. It's true. Father, you want us to overcome and be more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. You said in your word, greater is he that is in us than he is in the world. That means everything that we're facing, you said, I've set you up to overcome it, not to be overcome. You want us free from all addictions because that's the abundant life. And I just thank you, Lord, that we receive it now through your word and we resist every thought of the enemy that would contradict your word. Forgive us for agreeing with the devil, agreeing with society, and disagreeing with your word. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Speak to us tonight. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> principles. I want to talk to you about one principle tonight. And if there's a principle to make it real simple, is believe it and receive it. Say it with me. Believe it and receive it. A principle, again, what's this principle? A spiritual law. And we know it's a spiritual law when it works for everyone, everywhere, at any time. A spiritual law when it, God's spiritual laws don't change and don't think don't see we got to stop depending on luck and understand this if you apply God's principles you're guaranteed to get his results a principle is truth it's a command many times when God is, is speaking his principles he speaks it in command form I command you to do this or he might speak it in conditional form if you do this you'll get this if you don't do this you'll get this it's a rule of con con conduct and that means let's let's say a principle of forgiveness forgiveness is for um if you forgive others you'll be forgiven if you forgive others you'll be what that's a principle. If I forgive, God will forgive me. And the, the backside of that scripture is if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. So not forgive someone would actually interrupt your relationship with the Lord. If you break this principle, you're going to find yourself under condemnation. You're going to find yourself in lack. You're going to find yourself under a curse. And you say, man, things aren't going right. Could it be that you're breaking a principle of God? That's disconnecting you from the favor and blessings of God. Practice the principles of God so you start getting the results of God. So it's a rule of conduct. So when someone, uh, when someone curses me out, the Bible gives you a rule of conduct, a principle. They cuss you out, you bless them. You don't cuss them back out. Oh, I didn't know that rule. I thought they do, you do to them what they did to you. No, that's not, that's not how it works. That's the devil's rule of conduct. God's rule of conduct is you treat others the way you'd like to be treated. You bless those that curse you. It's a rule of conduct. And that means that when you're struggling, I don't know what to do here, just go to the principle, apply it, and you could get the blessings of it, okay? Um, it's also a prescript. And I like the word prescript because it means pre, before, and script, written. 
That means that God has pre-written principles for us to teach us how to get his prosperity, his abundance in our life. It's already been pre-written, so you'll know what to do. Isn't that great? Let me give you some just foundational truths about principles. God has given us pre-written guiding principles that are guaranteed to cause us to experience the abundant life. Not maybe. If I practice this principle, I'm guaranteed to experience the abundant life. I'm going to give you another principle. Simple principle. You, what you sow is what you'll reap. What you sow is what you're what? I guarantee you this, if you go out on the streets today and you just start punching people, I guarantee you're going to have a beat down by the end of the day. <laughs> because what you sow is what you're going to reap. What you put out there is what you're going to get back. If you go out there cussing everybody out, people are going to be cussing you out. What you sow is what you're going to... If you start loving people, you know where you're going to get back? Some love back. You start smiling, you start getting some smiles back. See, some of you guys are already smiling with me. If you put a smile, what you, the idea is you reap what you sow. So all you need to do is practice as a farmer, practicing a principle, I'll sow what I want to reap. I'm not going to sow what I see. I'm not going to sow what they do. I'm not going to be controlled by their attitude and let it control my next harvest. If I sow it, I what? These are all principles or prescript, pre-written. In Psalms 119.40, which is our foundational scripture, and it says this, I long for your guiding principles. That means I'm a, I, I search for principles that work. In every endeavor that I've ever been part of, I've always wanted to succeed. I've never gone into a business and said, my goal is to fail. My goal is to succeed and be profitable. If you start a church or a ministry, I'm not thinking, man, I, I, we're starting this church and the goal is no one comes, no one gets saved, no one gets set free, no one gets discipled, there's no miracles. That's our goal. That's never our goal. Our goal as human beings is to do better, is to win, is to accomplish, is to succeed, is to prosper. That means next year, I want to be in a better place than I was this year. Does anybody have some goals, dreams, aspirations, and visions? If you don't watch it, you start thinking, well, that's not for me. I've been living this life so long and it seems like I never get a break. Understand this. Most people that don't get a break is because they're not practicing the groundbreaking principles of God. God's principles cause breakthrough. God's principles cause what? If you're lazy, don't expect to have a profit. The Bible says in all hard work, there's what? Profit. You guys didn't know that. That's the scripture. See, so you got to know that stuff. In all hard work, there's what? So you don't go to work for your employer. You go to work, you go to work for the Lord and you work the hardest you can work. And God says, if you work hard, I will prosper you and you'll have massive profits at the end of your life. Right? How me get that. So let, let's look at this. So um, he says, I long for your guiding principles. Give me a new life in your righteousness. I will just cover one more guiding truth here. A righteous life causes a prosperous life. Look what the scripture says. Give me a new life in your righteousness. So the key is the new life or the prosperous life or the abundant life or the joyful life or the hopeful life or the peaceful life or the wealthy life or the healed life or the overcoming life is found in a lifestyle. Someone say a lifestyle. If you're not practicing righteousness, you're never going to see the new start, the new beginnings, the new results. Your emotions will change. Your family will change. Your thinking will change. Come on. Your results will change. Your harvest will change. Your favor will change when you practice God's principles, which actually create righteousness. Someone say righteousness. Righteousness. What does that mean? Righteousness is this. Rightness. It's a rightness. Well, there's wrongness and there's rightness. Rightness is that you're doing the right thing. Understand, if you do the right thing, you'll get the right results. Don't expect to get the right results and you're doing it all wrong. 
You do relationships wrong, they won't work. You handle your money wrong, your money won't work. Well, my money's cursed. No, maybe the way you're using it is cursed. Right? Instead of tithing, you're going to, you're going to Burger King and eating all your harvest. Could be. Could it be you're spending more than you're bringing in? Wrong use of money. You'll always be under a curse. It won't work out because you're not practicing. Your money's not rightness. I don't know if that's right. You need some rightness in your money. Come on, get your money righteous. It'll work for you. Use it right. Someone say, use it right. Use your body right. Use your eyes right. Come on, use your hands right. Well, I just, I, I just wanna, I just wanna go ahead and sleep with my boyfriend. I ain't married yet, and I wanna just have some fun with no commitment. You're doing it wrong. And you can say, "We're having fun. Do it whatever you want, but don't expect a husband. Don't expect a great life. Don't expect breakthrough. Don't expect respect. Don't respect honor because you don't even honor yourself." Well, if I, if I tell him that we're gonna wait until we get married, he's gonna leave me. Bye, bye. Hasta luego, sayonara. I'm going to respect me and I'm going to practice God's principles. If he says I'm going to wait until I get married, I will wait until I get married. And the husband that got hearts for me will build me up and say, baby, that's a right choice. I'm sorry for taking advantage of you. From this day on, we're going to honor God's principles because I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And I want to have a great marriage. So let's lay down this foundation and get this right. So I'm going to say rightness. It means godly or, or godly morals. It means rectitude. Now, that word rectitude, I looked it up, uh, the word rectitude, and this is the first definition. It's rightness of pr principle. How interesting that if you look up this word in the dictionary, if you look up the word rectitude, the first thing it says is practicing the right principle. It's the right application of principle. But it goes on to say, uh, uh, correctness or integrity but this was really interested and this is in the Hebrew it said prosperity of his people what it means is that you cannot practice God's principles and live righteous without you prospering so God is saying I've given you my pre-written principles my righteousness if you live it live according to principles you'll live a righteous life and it'll end with this the prosperity of my people so i've written my principles and i've showed you how to live righteous so you as my people can prosper you'll be known as the pro the, the prosperous people of god that practice god's principles amen come on it's not hard learn the principles long for the principles write down the principles and practice the principles and undo what you've done well, that's just the way I am. Well, if that's just the way you are and you don't want to change, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be a victim the rest of your life. This place should be packed. I tell you, people pay thousands of dollars to hear this kind of stuff in seminars. Could it be that the world is hungrier for change and success and prosperity than we Christians? Because our mindset is so low. Come on, it's time to get our mindset way higher. And whatever that you're touching right now, God wants it to grow. God wants it to increase. Come on, it shouldn't stay the same when the hand of God is on you and blesses everything that you put your hand to do. Are we still here? Now, understand this. I'm not, when I'm talking about this stuff, I'm talking to a group of people that are here that God is saying, I got a better life for you. Listen to my principles. How many want a better life? Come on, anybody? So principle number one, believe and receive. I must believe that God wants me to have an abundant life in order to experience it. Say it with me. I must believe that God wants me to have an abundant life in order to experience it. If you don't believe it, you will not receive it. 
Now life will beat you down. People will abuse you. Storms will come. Your car will break down. You will get flat tires. People that you believed in will betray you. People will hurt you. You will do things and at times you will fail. But it doesn't make you a failure. You'll have some difficult times. You'll have some mountaintops. You'll have some valleys. You'll have some wins. And you'll have some losses. Be careful that the losses and the struggles and the failures don't keep you down. Because that is not your destiny. What God is saying, those things happen to you, but they're not who you are. Be careful that you do not let your abusers define who you are and say, nobody wants you. Who would want somebody like you? First of all, God wants somebody like me, and he's giving me principles to apply so I don't have to stay in this hole that I'm in. I thank God. I long for his principles. I believe it, and I'm ready to receive some change in my life. You know how many people are hard-headed? They want advice, but they only want me to tell them what they want to hear. Like, you don't want advice. You're your own pastor. Someone told me uh, uh, some time back, I'm, uh, he was, I'm, you're my pastor. I go, no, I'm not. I go, why do you call me pastor and you don't even do what I tell you to do? You're your own pastor. Matter of fact, you're not even your pastor. The devil's your pastor. Because everything he tells you to do, let's go get high. Let's go. Punch him in the face. All right, bam. Cuss her out. Black, 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 black. Boom, you too. And your mama. And your uncle and everybody. Your uncle all go to hell. I don't care. How can you say Jesus is your Lord? And you got a pastor and everything he teaches you do the complete opposite. The truth is you want the results but you don't want to practice the principles. So therefore you disqualify yourself from the abundance that God has for you. Not because they don't, they're for you is that you don't practice it. Praise the Lord Wednesday night crowd. Bring somebody next week. Only those that believe receive. Say it with me. In Matthew 21, 22, it says, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. You know who said this? Jesus. And what he was saying, at, when, after he, he died and resurrected from the dead, he said it is finished. What he was saying, every scripture I've given you and every promise I've given you, all you need to do is practice it, believe it, ask for it, and receive it. We got to get rid of the spirit of worry and lack. I can't afford to give. I just can't afford. It's just I don't have no time. It, it's just too hard. My head hurts. <laughs> you got so many excuses if you don't watch it. You're excusing yourself out of your destiny. If you believe, if conditional statement, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. If you believe, you will receive whatever. Now, you got to get start, start getting real about your prayer life. In this book, we write down 10 things that we're believing for. I know this. If you can't even write down what you're believing for, this is what you're going to get. Nothing because you're asking and believing for nada. Another prayer life leads to another receiving life. That's in Spanish for the bilinguals. But that's to take some work and that takes some thinking and that takes some like, like massaging my brain and stuff. Yeah, because you're so used to just gelling. You're not used to thinking. But God says, I'll give you above and beyond what you ask or what? Think. It's time to sit down with yourself and get your mind back in order and know what you're believing for. And whatever you're stressed out about, make it a prayer. Amen. Well, I don't have a job. Stop crying about not having a job. Start praying for a job. You know, when, when I didn't have a job, you know what I prayed for? I go, God, I'm believing right now that you said you'll supply all of my needs according to riches and glory. And you said I should earn my living by the sweat of my brow. Give me a job so I can sweat. That's how I prayed. 
I go, I go, God, let's, let's scratch that. Give me more than one job offer. I want some choices. And then I said, thank you, Jesus. I received my job right now. And I got up and that stress of not having a job was gone. And now I'm job searching. I'm not searching for a job. I'm searching for the job God already gave me. Then I got multiple job offers and I start thinking, which one's best? Come on. You believe in your what? You believe in your what? And then when you get a job, practice the principle of working. Some people want a job, but they don't want to work. I got to do that too. Yeah, you got to do that too. And more than that. Come on. Do above and beyond what they ask too. And show them that you're a Christian. That you're a believer. When they ask you to go to mile, you go to second mile. And I do it for my Jesus Christ. I practice the principles. And before you know it, I'll be running this thing. How can you run the thing and you can't even show up on time? You're breaking another principle. It's calling in sick and you're not even sick. You just, we just stayed up too late. Praise the Lord. If you want to hear the truth, we come here for the truth. Right? I love you guys. I'm talking to you like I talk to my, my girls. They, they know different here. And I talk to my staff like that. We talk about the truth because I, I, I cannot sit here and hear lame excuses that come from the devil. And the worst thing about it, you believe it. Stop being a victim. Stop waiting for it. Everybody's hurting me. Turn it around. Practice God's principles. Overcome whatever's coming against you. Well, you know, my family, you know, we're, we're just all poor. We've always been poor. So what? They weren't practicing God's principles. That's why they were poor. They get a little money to go to the liquor store and buy some Budweiser, 40 ounces, and smoke some weed, and you're wondering why they can't succeed. Half of, the, half of their life, they're sleeping, and the other half of their life, they're drunk. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's four statements that bring this principle home. First, only those that believe will receive. Second statement that brings this principle home. We must believe... That God wants us to prosper and experience his abundance. We must believe that God wants us to prosper and experience his abundance. Say, someone say, say it with me. I believe, I believe that God wants me to prosper and experience his abundance. Nowhere in the Bible is there a story that God is saying, like, do less. Only less is sin. Less of you. But anytime he's telling you to do, do something, he starts off with the first blessing he puts on mankind. He says, be fruitful and multiply. Increase, grow, move forward, have more, go from less to more. God always wants us to go from what? Less to what? Our church should grow, not, not, not decline. Why? Because you're growing as a believer and you're bringing people and you're becoming an influencer and you're becoming a leader and you're becoming someone that other people want to be like and they say, how can I be like you? It says really simple, follow the right leader, practice his principles and you can get the same exact results that I'm getting. Come on, give God a little praise right now. Thank God for his principles. Somebody say believe. If you're not convinced that God really wants you to experience his prosperity, blessing, and his best, you'll never have it. We will receive at the level of our faith. And that's why you got to build your faith. This book, is, the purpose of this book is to build your faith to start receiving what God has for you. God has more. Someone say God has more. Look at Psalms 35, 27. Look at the scripture. May those shout for joy and rejoice who take delight in my vindication. But look at this last portion of the verse. And may they say continually. Say with me. May they say what? This is what it's saying. Is there something that you should be saying over and over and over? Now, what, what you say over and over and over, this is what happens. Eventually, if you keep saying it, You'll eventually believe it, good or bad. I'm a failure. Nobody likes me. Oh my God. <laughs> I 
uh, it's, it's gonna, I feel it's just going to get worse. I'm just waiting for something to happen because it always happens. <laughs> is that your faith? It is because if you keep saying it, that'll be your life. And you'll be a, in a cycle of defeat and, and, and loss and, and sickness and, and, and decrease and brokenness. You'll be in that decrease. And I'll tell you why. Because your mouth is full of decrease. Whatever you say continually, eventually you'll believe it and then you'll receive it. Say it with me. Whatever you say continually... You'll eventually believe it, and then what? Right? When we, when we got into this building, 120,000 square foot building with no money, I couldn't just say, we got nobody in the bank. We got nobody, no money in the bank. We got nobody in the bank. We got nobody in the bank. We got no money in the bank. We can't do it. We can't do it. We never built anything. We never built anything. We never built anything. We never built anything. Chicka, chicka, chicka. We never built chicka, chicka. We never built it. San Bernardino is the second poorest large city in the country. San Bernardino is the second poorest large city in the country. There's no way it could happen. We can't, we can't, we can't. Some of you guys got dances for your negativity. It's like a broken record. Over and over, and you're wondering when the break's gonna happen. Wondering when someone's when you're gonna win the lotto. Wondering when someone's gonna drop some de dance so you can get an inheritance. Just wondering when it's gonna. It's just when the right people are gonna come in my life. No one's coming to your rescue. You better get the principles of God applied over your life and start speaking God's abundance over yourself. If you can't get breakthrough in your mouth, you'll never have it in your life. Well, I'm not educated enough. I'm not educated enough. I'm not educated enough. I'm not educated. May they say continually. May they say what? This is what they should be saying. This is what we should be saying continually. The Lord be exalted. Say it with me. Who delights in the prosperity of his servant. Who delights in the prosperity of his servant. May they say continually, the Lord be exalted. Because he's the one who delights in the prosperity of his servant. God saying, that this is what he's saying. That I rejoice, I take pleasure, I enjoy when my servants prosper. Understand, don't get this twisted. I don't enjoy when you're suffering. I don't enjoy when you're in bondage. I don't enjoy when you're depressed and you're losing because I'm not a loser and I created you to be like your daddy. And when you prosper, I get excited. Come on, God's excited about your future, your prosperity. Why don't you exalt the name of the Lord and match his excitement. Delight. Someone say delight. So what does that word mean? My vocabulary isn't that big. We're going to break it down for you then. The word desire, I mean delights means desires. He desires for his servants to prosper. You know who are servants? Those that do what he tells them to do. Those that practice his principles. He goes, I love when you prosper, when you serve me. If you'll just start serving me instead of your own will, your own desires, your own comfort, your own dreams, and start giving all that to me, and just serve me, and allow me to put a vision in you, and start living a life of, of purpose, and start serving God, and start serving others, start serving your church, and start giving, and start, come on, start investing. God is saying this, I love it. If you'll just obey me and serve me, I love to see you prosper. Is pleased with the lights. He's pleased, finds pleasure in. He wishes that you prosper. I got four, five girls. I don't like wishing. Like, I just hope you don't make it, man. <laughs> like, I, I want all my girls to do good. I want to marry the right people. I want to grow in the Lord. 
I want them to be healthy. I want them to enjoy life. And when they do and they succeed, I brag about them. Why? Because I enjoy the prosperity of my girls. And God is saying, Marco ain't all that. I'm all that. And I love you way more than Marco loves his girls. So why would you ever think that I take joy and, 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 and I find pleasure in your failure? Since God's saying like, you failed again. Like, that's what you get, dummy. That's not God. He said, no, baby, come on. Don't do it that way. You already know that don't work, right? Did you learn that? That's a principle that you're breaking. Turn that around because prosperity is on the other side of the coin. You're okay. You're only one decision away from turning your life around, from turning that failure into a victory. Come on. You're one decision away. Come on. You're mo one moment away. You're one meeting away. You're one decision away of buying a book and changing your life. He takes joy in the what? Prosperity. That, that Hebrew word shalom. It means in the peace of his servants. In the success of his servants. In the happiness of his servants. Have you ever thought about this? That God wants you happy? Even when your hair is so nappy? That's, see you guys laughing. If your hair is nappy, don't get mad. Just, just straighten that thing out. All right. In your health. Someone say health. So we say health. Does God want you healthy? There was nowhere in the Bible that Jesus made people sick. He only came to bring health. Someone say health. It also means flourishing. When you're flourishing and you're thriving, he takes pleasure in that. When your friendship and unity in your human relationships, when you have unity in your relationships, he loves it. He loves when me and Lisa as a, as a husband and wife that we've been together for 33 years. He loves that we're in unity. He goes, I love it. I love it. I love it. He does not love when you're fighting, when you're arguing, when you're hurting each other, cussing you out, cutting each other, uh, just knocking each other down, discouraging each other. He doesn't like that. He don't like division in the church. Let me understand that. God's not excited about division, even though you think you're a prophet. Well, the Lord told me. Stop it. You're, you're dividing the church. You're messing people up. That God doesn't, he's not happy with that. He hates it. Amen. This is the third thing I want to say. No, I want to say number three. I'm going to say it again, but I said it again. The continual confession of God's word over ourselves builds our faith to receive and experience God's abundant life. The continual confession of what? The continual confession of what? You should get to the point that you're able to say the Bible says. Because when the devil comes to you with a lie, say, no, 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 that's not true. The Bible says. What's well, not for you? No, no, no. It doesn't say. It's right here. In the beginning, when God created man, he created him in his own image. He created me to be like him. And then he blessed man. He says, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. And, and I understand that God wants me to do better. He wants me to multiply. He wants me to increase. He wants me to grow. So I rebuke this spirit of the decrease that's coming into my dreams and nightmares and trying to make me feel like I'm going backwards. I am not going backwards. I am going forward. And how do I know this? I got God's word. I believe God's word. I confess. God's word and I'll keep on confessing it until I believe it my kid he will serve God I don't care how crazy he's acting as for me and my house we will serve the Lord I'm not believing this lie that my kids are going to hell and they're going to be lost that's not what the scripture says my house me and my house salvation will, protect, will cover the whole house my mama's going to get saved my husband's going to say my daughter's going to get saved my kids are going to say my grandchildren are going to get saved I'm here standing on the word of God and devil, you can try to do whatever you can to try to change my mind. But I'm already convinced on the word of God. I'll keep saying it until I believe it and I see it. I'm going to give you an uh, insight. Sometimes you confess it. Then you believe it. And you receive it. Sometimes you believe it. Already you confess it. And you receive it. The believing and confessing could switch. As long as you have all three, you could have it. This is what God is saying. It's time to change your confessions. Because if you cannot change your declarations over yourself, 
If you see yourself as a loser, as defeated, as a victim, as a grasshopper, that's how everybody will see you, including the devil. That's not who you are. If you're a child of God, God wants you to prosper. God says, man, you're my daughter, you're my son. It's time to get your thinking up. Match it up my word. Amen? Amen. And the last major statement, supporting statement here is this. The devil's mission is to stop us from thinking, believing, and confessing God's word so that we will not receive what he promises. The devil's mission is to stop us from thinking, believing, and confessing God's word so that we will not receive what it pro promises. The devil knows the principle of believing and receiving. He knows that if we don't believe, we can never receive anything from God, including the most important gift, the gift of salvation and eternal life. We cannot let the devil steal God's blessings through his distractions and replacements. And I say replacements because the devil will replace God's word in your mouth with his words. Such as, I can't. This is a straw that broke the camel's back. Like that's a scripture. That's not a scripture. I don't see how it could happen. I never, these are replacements. Instead of speaking the word of God, you're speaking the replacements. I never get a break. No one appreciates what I do. It always ends this way. My anxiety is killing me. First of all, God's not giving you a spirit of fear. Why are you claiming it like it's yours? It's not yours. That's the devil's anxiety. Give it to him. I rebuke the anxiety. The Bible says be anxious for nothing, but pray about everything. Bring your specific prayer request before God. If I'm anxious, it's time to start praying, and I'm going to start receiving the peace of God, and I'm going to start receiving every single thing I'm asking for, because whatever I believe, I will read. You guys are getting it. Look at the scripture. This is the last verse. Luke 8, 12. Look. Look at Luke. Some people, some people are like the seed that fell beside the path. They hear God's teachings. They hear what? How many have heard God's teachings tonight? How many have heard God's teachings today? I just said today or tonight because they might show it in the day. So I just relate into the people in the day and people at night. Look, it says, they hear God's teaching, but then the devil comes. But then the what? Understand, after you hear the word, the devil's coming. Every word that you hear, there's devils that come to steal your faith in that word so you don't receive what the word is trying to get you. Look what it says. Causes them to stop thinking. Look what it says. Then the devil comes and causes them to stop thinking about it. About what? Stop thinking about the word. Stop thinking about the word. You know what should be happening while you're while you leave here is digesting the word. Like, man, that was that was interesting, wasn't it? What'd you get out of it? What I got was believe and you receive. And man, I got changed my confessions. I've been confessing all the wrong stuff. And I've been confessing the devil's replacements instead of God's word. Man, this has to change. God's given us principles and they're guaranteed that if we just practice them, that we could experience a prosperous life. We could experience the shalom of God, the haya of God, the peace of God, the strength of God, the wealth of God, the abundance of God. Man, I, man we, we better start talking like this. We better start thinking about our lives and start thinking about our thoughts. Where it says, the devil causes them to stop thinking about it, the word. This keeps them from believing it and being saved. He goes, if I could just stop you, get you to stop, just distract you, I don't care. Netflix will be fine. I'll have you on social media, that'll be fine. Focusing on all your problems, that'll be fine. Focusing on your past, that'll be fine. Getting you lustful and full of pornography, that'd be great. 
hating, hating someone, hating your mom and your daddy for what they did to you, that's fine. I don't even care what you think about as long as you're not thinking about the word. Because if you're thinking about the word, you're going to start believing and start receiving salvation. You're going to start receiving wholeness. You're going to start receiving, come on, breakthrough. You're going to start receiving eternal life. You're going to be saved from the penalties of sin. You're going to be completely restored to hell. You're going to be made whole. You're going to start recovering. But if I can just stop you from thinking about the word, I got you. When you're neutral even, I'm just going to zone out. My mind thinks... <laughs> Isn't it crazy that new age meditation tries to get you to get to a place that you're thinking nothing? Because the devil wants you to stop thinking about the word. Because as long as you're thinking nothing, you're going to get nothing. But I feel better thinking about nothing. You might feel better about thinking about nothing. But the truth is, you're never going to get saved. You'll never recover. This is it. How many learned some tonight? Okay. Are we ready to break up with the wrong confessions? I'm sorry, so I'm done. If you've, if you've been saying the wrong confessions over yourself, stand up right now. We're going to break that. We've got to break it. You can't just say it. Yeah, you can't just say it and act like it didn't happen. Because when you said it, you said it, you made a covenant with the word. And that, so I want you to get this. Some of the demonic oppression that you have in your life only started with agreement with a, with a replacement statement. And when you, when you agreed with that demonic replacement statement... Um, it would, and the, the devil, the demons have access to your life through your words. So, so if that's the case, you got to undo what you did. Someone say, renounce it. We got to break up. It's all over. It'll never be the same. I'll, stop it. In the name of Jesus. How many are ready to re start confessing God's word over your life too? Okay. Everybody stand up. We're going to stand right there. Repeat after you. Say, Jesus. I thank you for giving me your word. Your word says that I overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. Forgive me, Lord, for speaking death, depression, failure, defeat, lack over myself and others. From this day forward, I renounce the spirit of poverty, lack, failure, backsliding, addiction over my life. I am not an addict. I am not a victim. I am not depressed. I am not full of anxiety. That is not my inheritance. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. I believe your word. That you take the light in the prosperity of your servant. From this day forward, I declare that I am a servant of the Lord. Not my will, but your will be done on earth the way it is in heaven. I break the cycles of the devil, of decrease, of the enemy. Curses. I turn them around now with my confession. From this day forward, I will confess your word continually over my life. In the name of Jesus, I am free to prosper, to have peace, to move forward, to make progress, to thrive, to succeed, to have healthy relationships. I receive your eternal life by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. How many said that in your mentor? Come on, you said it in your mentor. Remember, let's all stand up. Just remember, I'm going to dismiss just a second. Just remember, just one statement. The lady that was sick for 12 years, she says, it, she said, she said, she said to herself, she said to herself, she had a conversation with herself. The most dangerous conversations 
And the most powerful conversations is the conversations you have with yourself. That's the most dangerous. You're, you're thinking about quitting when you should be sticking it out. Yeah. It's just inco- oh, it's inconvenient. You, you got to pass tests. That means you can't, you don't expect great victories if you can't even hang out for the battle. You got to fight. You stop quitting. Start enduring. Say, I'm not, I don't care what happens. I'm sticking this out. I'm planted. I'm staying in the church. I'm staying strong. This is my home church. I'm moving forward. I don't care if there's offensive people. They're not going to offend me out of my purpose or my blessing. I'm going to stick this thing out. Come on. Fight. Watch out the words that you're saying. Stop talking about people. You're wasting time. Well, I feel so sick. It seems like this migrant just keeps getting worse. Stop it. Why don't you claim your healing? It takes just as much effort, but I know, but, but I feel sick. You walk by faith, not by sight. Stop calling things as, uh, call things that are not as though they were. Get God's word in your mouth. God couldn't speak darkness and get light. He said, let there be light. And then there was. Amen. Get this word in you. I would even maybe go over this teaching like a hundred times while you're on your treadmill working out because I know y'all work out. Just like, believe it and receive it. Amen. Come on. I'm going to give one more opportunity because the devil wants to steal this word. And it all begins with this. Jesus is a source of an abundant life, eternal life. You're searching. I'm going to tell you this. Maybe you didn't know this or maybe the devil tricked you. Do you really think that getting high is going to make you complete? Like, well, it does for a minute. Yeah, for a minute after it steals all your money and makes you cuckoo and makes you crazy and makes you steal from your mama. I got, maybe that's all you do, though, to numb your pain. But I got some good news. There's a healer here that can set you free and heal you. Come on. There's a better life. Someone said a better life. You got to choose it. Somebody say, you got to choose it. You got to choose rightness. You got to make up your mind. Alcohol can't do it. Some of you guys are more like a person is your God and God's not your God. Because when they left you, you'll never be the same. I, I'll never be whole till they come back. God says, so they're, they're going to make you whole. Maybe that's why they're not in your life. Because you had the wrong God all the time. You need to get to the point that you don't, come on, you don't need him. You don't need her because I'm satisfied. I have the abundant life and I receive that when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Come on, there's a satisfaction you can get from him. Let's end it with this. Tonight, every one of us are here. We're live online. We're alive. But there will be a day that you die. And the devil wants to steal this word lest you believe and be saved. Because if you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and understand this, you sinned, I sinned, everybody sinned. But the problem is the wage of sin or the price of sin or the penalty of sin is death. And death just means this, that one day if you die without the Lord, you'll be separated from God forever in a real hell. The second death is called the lake of fire. Jesus came to save you from the misery that the sin's causing you now and the misery will cause you forever. Because I do know this, a life of sin, doing it your way and doing it my way, the more I do it, the more depressed and empty I get. And the more things I need to numb that pain. And if you've been numbing your pain and trying to medicate your pain, understand this, it's not going away. You're just numbing it. It's still there. The mis- sin leads to misery. Sin leads to hell. The price for sin is, is death. But I got good news for you. God loved you so much. He takes prosperity in the servants. I've given you my principles. And the Bible says the principle, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. Saved from future punishment. Be forgiven today. Be set free from the discouragement. Be set free from the depression. Be set free from the hopelessness. Be set free from the cycles of destruction that you're in. You're one call away. Whoever calls, whoever calls, whoever calls will be saved. It's a principle. Whoever calls will be saved. If you don't call, you can't be saved. There has to be a day say, Jesus, save me. Or you could just drown drowning your pain beware of an excuse that says not today tomorrow tomorrow never comes bible says today's the day of salvation tomorrow's not guaranteed all i'm letting you know he who has jesus has eternal life he who does not have jesus does not have eternal life i'm just letting you a principle jesus is the only source of forgiveness eternal life and he's the only one that can make you whole
You're missing something in your life and you're empty. The only thing that can make you whole, make you complete is a person and he comes and lives inside of you. I'm not just giving you principles, I'm giving you a person. He loves you. And all Jesus wants is a relationship with you. He's standing at your heart's door right now. And I'm going to ask you a real serious question. If today were the last day on earth, because it could be, we have people leave these services and they die. We have thousands of people that come to these services and every year there's somebody that comes to Wednesday night service and within 24 hours they're gone. Some have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. It was the last chance. They didn't know they had less than 24 hours to live. The Bible says that every man is appointed a day to die and then judgment. There's no purgatory. There's no second chances. You got an opportunity now to be saved while you have breath in your lungs. If you reject Jesus now, this is what's going to happen. You made your choice and you'll live for it, by it for eternity. I offered you life. I offered you abundance. I offered you eternal life. I offered you my peace. I offered you my joy. I offered you a right lifestyle. And you want to stay on the wrong path. That's your choice. But I'm letting you know God loves you. I love you. And that's why I'm fighting for your soul right now. Today's your day of salvation. If you're here in this room, you say, Pastor, that's me. Just be honest. I'm not sure if I'm to die right now, go to heaven. I'm not sure I have eternal life. I'm not sure I have that abundant life. Understand, forget about the principles if you don't want to accept the person. You accept the person, you get his principles to work for you. God takes prosperity and his servants. Become a ser serve God. You serve the devil, you serve the drugs, you serve the lust, you serve, serve your anger, you serve whatever. Serve God. This is your day. When I count to three, say, Pastor, that's me. I want a new beginning. I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. I want to receive eternal life. I want to place my faith in Jesus. I'm not sure if I'm going to die right now, go to heaven, but I want to go to heaven online. I want to go to heaven. I need change. I feel oppressed. I feel suicidal. Something has to change. And God is saying right now, I'm giving you an offer. And today's your day to say yes. I said yes to you. Will you say yes to me? One. When I say three, Pat, you say, I want you to raise your hand. That's me. I want a new beginning. I want a new start. I want eternal life. I want to be saved. I want to be set free. Two. And when I say three, I'm not sure if I'm going to die right now, go to heaven. When I say three, raise your hands. Who cares what anybody else thinks? Between you and God, just raise your hand proud and loud. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building saying, that's me. Proud of you, young man. Proud of you. Come on. Come on. It takes a real man to do this. There, there, there. Come on. That's awesome. There, over there. Proud of you. Anybody else? Anybody else? In the back over there. I want those to raise their hands. Will you do me a big favor? Will you leave your seat and come forward? This is what's happening. You're taking action on your belief. If you don't take action, nothing happens. Come forward right now if you're saying, that's me. I want an abundant life. I want to receive Jesus. I need a new beginning. I need God's peace. I want to be saved from judgment. I'm done doing it my way. I've been breaking God's principles. I've been a lawbreaker. I'm done. Come on, they're still coming. Come on, church. Come on, they're still coming. Right here Online. Stand up right where you're at. We'll pray with you in just a second. We believe. Stand up on you. Online. Just stand up. This is your day. This is your new beginning. We're going to command the depression to go. Come on. We're going to break the cycles in the name of Jesus. We're going to command the anxiety to go. We're going to command healing in this room. We're going to command prosperity. We're going to break the spirit of poverty. Come on, poverty is being broken right now. Get ready. There's no limits. There's no limits. Come on. You come the way you are, and you repent of, your, of breaking God's principles. So I'm done doing it my way. Don't come up here if you're not ready to break the prince. Right, break up with the wrong principle. I'm done living that way. You come up, you're ready to follow Jesus. God will help you prosper. Okay, you can do it no matter where you're at. Love you. Love you. Ready? Come on. Hold my hand. We're going to overcome. Okay? This is your moment right now. Because the devil's trying to steal your peace. He's trying to steal your faith. And God says, I, right now, I've come to fight against the doubt and the unbelief. And I'm, I'm going to give you my joy and my peace. And I'm a God of recovery and restoration. Believe me. Believe me and you'll receive it. Okay? That's God's word. Are you guys ready? Awesome. Is that the angels right there? All right. There we go. All right. God, you know, you know, God has, God has a, a plan for your life. And, and I know as, as you've been living, you're thinking, man, what's next? And, and, and sometimes we want to succeed. And God says, you seek me first. And you put me first. And I'll add everything to you. 
and, and you've not gone too far. I'm going to turn it around for you. God says, just serve me with all of your heart and I'll give you all of me. Ready? Ready? Come on. Time to surrender. Proud of you guys. Proud of you. Proud of you guys. Come on. It takes a real man to do this. You guys keep, I mean, we just, we're, we just keep adding people that want to be saved. Are you ready to live this life? Come on, you can't be down more for the drugs and down more for your hood and down more for the nonsense. You should die for that stuff, willing to give your health up. Come on, give your life to Jesus and serve him better than you serve the devil. <laughs> Hallelujah. We break the depression. Come on, we break the anxiety. We break the addiction now in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Proud of you. Proud of, he was in the front row. He was in the spitting section. I love that. Proud of you. He was just sitting there paying attention the whole time like, what? Proud of you. Come on. Takes a real man sitting in the front. And then come up to, come on, come up to the front. Two or three steps. I, I mean, that's a big step sometimes. That's like, that's like Grand Canyon. Like, you did it. Let's pray. Okay? I love you guys, but let's do this. Don't be here one day and gone the next. Bible says, don't forsake the assembly of one another. You know what that means? It's a principle. Always come to church. Every week. Well, I got to change my schedule. Change your schedule. But come to church. Feed your spirit. It's time to grow. Amen? Don't expect to grow and you can't even show. I'm rapping right now. Don't expect to grow if you can't even show, bro. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Repeat after me, everybody. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a lawbreaker. I've broken your principles. I'm a sinner. And the wage of sin is death, misery, discouragement, depression, failure, poverty, sickness. I'm done. Today, I repent of all my sins. And I believe that you died on the cross to be punished for my sins so that I can be forgiven. Forgive me, Jesus. I believe that you rose from the dead. You are alive. I open my heart and I ask you, Jesus, come in and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Make me new. I thank you, Lord. From this day forward, I'm saved. I've been empowered to live a new life. Your life, the prosperous life, the victorious life, the whole life, the purposeful life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me tonight. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. And I'll continue confessing that until the day I die and see you face to face. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Everybody that's here, we're going to pray with you, get your information, and help you in your next step. There's a next step. There's always a next step. We got baptism. We got Holy Words. One, two, three. Buy the book. One, just 30. Right now, it's 25 days in that book. 25 days of transforming your mind and transforming your life. Every day, it takes like five, ten minutes at the most, and you get it done. But go through it. Meditate on the scripture. Continue to confess. You need prayer. Come on up. Whatever you're going through, you're going through heartbreak. You got a major loss. Come forward. We got a team that'll pray with you. We're going to pray with you and help you get some comfort and strength in this. We love you.